Hey guys, uh, today's video will be part 2 of the Q&A and that's it, that's the introduction, I don't have anything else. Let's start the first question. You sure do read a lot, are you superhuman? Uh, yes I am. Uh, kidding aside, what is your workflow for reading? Do you read in a certain time of day? And how about audiobooks? Unfortunately, I don't do audiobooks. Uh, I have tried several times, a lot of times. I wish I can, seriously. I'm, I'm super jealous of those who can use audiobooks to uh, digest their stories, but unfortunately I cannot, uh, I cannot concentrate enough. As for workflow for reading, uh, I do have two times of day where I definitely will read, and that's in the morning uh, before, before daily activities happen, and in the night before I go to sleep. Those two are the, the two time period where I will definitely read. As for the day, I pretty much just read whenever I can. Uh, believe me, surprisingly, you can uh, keep on reading one, one or two chapters. You can get a lot of reading done in a day by doing that. Uh, moving on to the next question. Best movies and TV shows you've watched that were based on books? For movie, definitely Lord of the Rings, the extended edition. I have watched it so many times and it's still my favorite fantasy movies, their masterpiece. Even better than the books in my opinion. Yes, there, I've said it. As for TV series, it has to be Game of Thrones, uh, based on A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin for the first six seasons. The, uh, the last two seasons were uh, very mixed. Next question, if you were going to launch a cultural capsule for the human race off into space and you were in charge of selecting the one fantasy author to best represent us, who would you pick? Oh, this is so difficult. I think... Uh, uh, I think in this case, we have to choose the one that uh, represent hopes in their stories. So I think a good choice for this would be uh, Brandon Sanderson and John Gwynn's. I think their stories represent hopes a lot, even though the battles and the settings that the story takes place can be pretty dark sometimes. But hope and love were very integral to the storyline, always. Next question, what's the darkest fantasy you've read? I assume this is for novels. I'm going to answer with Manifest Delusion series by Michael Fletcher, and for sci-fi, it would be Dark Age by Pierce Brown, the fifth book in the Red Rising saga. As for manga, uh, Berserk by Kentaro Miura definitely stands as one of the darkest, probably the darkest manga series I've ever read. Next question is, what book or book series are you intimidated by and haven't started because of it? It can be because of the length of the books or the number of or volumes in the series. Right now, I think the one that I'm most intimidated by is Wars of Light and Shadow by Jenny Wurtz. Don't get me wrong, I'm really really looking forward to reading this series. And there's only one book left in the 11 book series, but I heard that the prose can be very difficult at times. I haven't read any of her works, but yeah, that's what I heard. I think that's the one that intimidates me the most. 11 books of difficult prose, that will be difficult. But I definitely will be reading this one once the final book comes out. I think it will come out next year or the year after. Uh, next question, what led to the creation of Novel Notions and how did you meet and or recruit all of your, your reviewers? We created Novel Notions together about two years ago, but we first met, uh, all of us met on Goodreads. We used to comment on each other's reviews uh, plenty of times. And after a while, we decided to create a group first on Goodreads. And then we decided to do Secret Santa, we decided to do birthday presents, and we still do. And after a while, we, we thought, you know what, maybe uh, it's time for us to create a blog one day. But before we created Novel Notions, each one of us were on a separate group. Although me, TS, and Celeste were on the same blog called Bookness, uh, but Haifa, Eon, and Emma were on different blocks. And because we keep on chatting so many times uh, with on our WhatsApp group, and after a while, we decided to create our own blocks together. And next question, what is the most underrated self-published book or series you have read? Hmm, there is too many here. Uh, in my opinion, a lot of self-published or indie fantasy books are underrated. Uh, the Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wong has kind of took, has took off now. A lot of people have started reading it and loving it, and I'm truly grateful for it, so I'm gonna exclude that for now. I guess right now, my choice would be Ash and Sand Trilogy by Richard Nell and Paternus Trilogy by Doug Ashton. Both are some of my favorite series, and I highly, highly recommend them. And to the next question, your reviews help all of us when it comes to what to read next. Thank you. Which author would you most like to interview? Brandon Sanderson, John Gwynn, 
Joe Abercrombie, Robin Hobb, Pierce Brown, uh, Fondali, Nicholas Im, Steven Erickson, uh, M.L. Wang. There's still so much authors that I want to talk to. Next question, which series haven't you started yet but hope to start reading in the near future? The Last Kingdom series by Bernard Conwell. I love the TV series and I'm hoping to read the books uh, next year. And of course, Austin Art Saga by Ted Williams. Next question, is your favorite Soulsborne game? That's, that's Dark Soul and Bloodborne. My choice would be Bloodborne and the first Dark Soul. Also, we both love Richard Anderson and Felix Ortiz cover art. Is there another cover artist out there to keep an eye out for? Oh, so many, so many. Mark Simonetti, Sam Weber, Dando Santos, uh, Michael Wellen, and then John, John Anthony Di Giovanni, Miranda Meek, Magali Villeneuve. Seriously, I have a list, a long list of favorite artists. Next question. What do you like to do when you're not reading and are there some essentials to make your reading comfortable? I used to play sports a lot, but now not really. And I guess what I love to do when I'm not reading is just uh, watching anime, uh, watching television show, watching movies, and play video games. As for essentials for making my reading more comfortable, uh, nothing. I don't have anything, pretty much just my Kindle. That's that's very important to me. Kindle is an essential for me now. Next question. Should I read Malazan and what edition should I get? Paperback or Mass Market? The Mass Market is actually good enough and they're uh, less expensive. But you will probably break their spines. Uh, consider that. Uh, so maybe a better option is to read them in your e-reader, in your Kindle. That's what I did. Next question. If you could visit and travel to any of the worlds you have read about, Safety assured, where would you choose? Uh, probably Four Corners of Civilization from the King Killer Chronicle. There is something about that world that feels comfortable for me to visit. And of course, Middle Earth. Next question, what's the most memorable author interaction you've had since you launched your book reviewing platforms? And which fantasy worlds would you love seeing a crossover for? If you could pair up a manga artist with a fantasy author, would you pick? Oh wow, these are difficult questions. For memorable author interaction, I pretty much treasure every interaction I've had with uh, authors that are kind to me. Seriously, some of them are truly, truly kind-hearted. Like in Bloody Rose, if you read the acknowledgement, you will see my name being mentioned by Nicholas Imes. And that one really took me by surprise. And yeah, I feel so grateful. John Gwynn also has sent me a Merry Christmas card two, twi uh, two times in a row. Uh, this year will be the third one if, you s if he sent me another one. And a lot of self-published and indie authors are super kind. They sending physical books to me with their own money is already so something that I'm very thankful for. And some of them include <laughs> my name on their books, like uh, Paternus, Paternus Trilogy by Doug Ashton. Then there is also uh, M.L. Wang, who's who sent me the Sword of Kaigen, uh, personalized and signed, without me knowing anything about it. That surprised me so much. And when I look at the back of the book, my name is also there. Just... And there's just so much more. I'm going to need a specialized video if I want to mention all of them. I'm pretty much very grateful for everyone who have interacted with me. Which fantasy worlds would you love seeing a crossover for? Hmm... This is also a lot, but I think the Poppy War and the Sword of Kaigen would would make a great crossover. And if you could pair up a manga artist with a fantasy author, who'd you pick? The Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee being paired up by those who did solo leveling. Amazing. It will be so amazing. Next question. If you could have dinner with any author, dead or alive, who would, who would you pick? Uh, John Gwynn, Nicholas Ames, Joe Abercrombie. I think that will be very fun to talk to. And Brandon Sanderson seems very nice as well. Next question. If you could have any two authors collaborate on a book, who would they be and why? Probably uh, John Gwynn and Joe Abercrombie or John Gwynn and George R. R. Martin. I think the combination between those two will be super amazing. I want to say Joe Abercrombie and George R. R. Martin, but that, that would be total bleakness. Next question is, which five fantasy authors deserve a larger readership than they currently have and why? Obviously, I have a lot of authors that I think deserve so much more readership, so much. But right now at the top of my head is uh, John Gwynn. Seriously, his books deserve uh, the fame of Brandon Sanderson or George R. R. Martins. It's honestly baffling to me that his books still aren't that popular yet. Considering the quality of his books and the output that he keeps on pouring, he actually released one book per year, always consistent, and the quality are all amazing. 
it's insane that he's still not popular. And then I also think that the Green Bone Saga deserves so much more readership. It's the best urban fantasy I've read so far. The Wounded Kingdom trilogy by R.J. Barker is another one that I think st still deserves more readership. And then there is also, uh, as again, Ascent trilogy by Richard Nell. And this one is probably the most underrated of all of them. It is uh, Blout Sanders' Ark by Jeff Salyards, one of the best Grimdark series that I've read. And I have never heard anyone talk about this book, almost never, seriously, so rarely. Uh, next question. Will I would be very curious to hear what you think of the books by the classic yet hardly ever discussed authors like Michael Moorcock and Gene Wolfe if you manage to read any of those sometimes. Uh, the Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe is on my list and I hope uh, I'll, get, I'll get to it uh, next year, hopefully. I've heard a lot of great things about his books uh, but I think uh, what I heard is that they're difficult. I'm not sure, I guess we'll see. Uh, next questions are how many hours a day do you read and how many pages can you read in one hour? And if your house was on fire, almighty and odium forbid, and you could only save one book, which would it be? How many hours a day do you read? Uh, I read in total, I think about uh, two until four hours, depending on how busy I am. And how many pages can you read in one hour? About 30 to 50 pages, depending on the denseness and thickness of the book. And if your house was on fire, and I, I think I would choose I think it's impossible to save only one book. I think I will save my Kindle. Next questions are, how did you manage to read Malazan in such a short span? And what book scene is the banner of your channel from? Uh, for the first question is that, uh, I read Malazan in, in about, uh, about three months, I think. Yeah, I think I read Malazan in less than three months, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the problem is this, Malazan is a very complex series and it's very dense. And every reader will face this differently, but personally, uh, because of the intricacies of the series and the complexities, I want to be able to remember as much as I can. And if I waited too long, I will lose my motivation and I will lose the details that I've got. And I don't want that. Even, even reading it in such a short period of time, I still wasn't able to remember all the details. I think it's actually impossible to actually get all the details on your first read. As for the banner of my channel, uh, it's nothing. It's not from a book. It's done by Felix Ortiz, one of my favorite artists, and a very very kind person who allowed me to use his art. Seriously, check out his portfolio. They're gorgeous, and if you're a self-published or indie author, I suggest you contact him to do your cover art. Next question is your least favorite fantasy series, uh, probably The Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. It just doesn't work for me at all. And the next question is, which popular book or series you were not able to get into or did not appreciate as much as the hype? Personally, I have finished Malazan series few years back. Now I am planning to start the other big epic series, The Wheel of Time. What is your opinion on Wheel of Time? Have you read this series? You pretty much just answered your own questions. And yes, I did read this series up to the fourth book. I have given up with it for now, okay? But I'm really disappointed by The Wheel of Time. <laughs> It just didn't work as much as I hoped. Uh, one of the weirdest thing about this series is that I actually love hearing people talk about the Wheel of Time. Seriously, every time people talk about the Wheel of Time, I actually get excited. That's also why I did uh, give the books a try in the first place. And for God's sake, I actually have the a memory of like two of them on my bookshelf. Uh, but the actual reading experience just didn't live up to the expectations so much. The characters were infuriating and I think it's very overwritten. And the worst thing, I think it relies a lot on, on the characters keeping things from each other. And I know there is a reason for them hiding secrets from each other, but still, come on, I've read only four books and this has been repeated plenty of times already. I've heard that it goes on for seven more books like this. No way, that's crazy. <laughs> That's insane. I don't think I can do it. That being said, and although I said I have given up uh, with the series, the series is still on my is still on my TBR pile. And maybe, maybe one day, not soon, I will read them all. I'm very excited for the TV show though. I have a good feeling that it will work really well as a TV series. Uh, we're almost at the end of this Q&A. Next question is... Uh, I'm curious to know what are your thoughts and preference on physical books versus ebooks versus audiobooks and hardback versus paperback versus mass market paperback and US cover versus UK covers and standalone versus trilogy versus super long series. That's a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, okay, for physical books versus ebooks versus audiobooks, uh, I will have to say no to audiobooks. As I've said before, audiobooks doesn't work for me. 
As for physical and ebooks, I don't really have a preference now. I used to only prefer physical books, but now if it's a non-illustrated edition, I don't mind it. But if it's books with interior artworks like the Storm at Archive and the Name of the Wind 10 Anniversary Edition, I definitely prefer reading them in physical. As for hardback versus paperback versus mass market paperback, again, I don't actually have a preference here. I love them all, but my favorite would have to be floppy paperback. They're just the best ultimate form of reading, really. As for US cover versus UK cover, I don't think I can choose this one because uh, there are instances where the UK cover are better, there are instances where the US cover are better, and I think they're quite balanced on each other. It's more difficult when both covers are pretty and you want to get both books. Seriously, that's uh, that's the dilemma. As for standalone versus trilogy versus super long series, again, I love them all, but standalone is a bit difficult because there are only a few fantasy standalone that work really well. So my choice would be either between trilogies and super long series. But for super long series, there aren't too many of them compared to trilogies. Uh, so my choice would be trilogies and quartets. I think three or four books are optimal. Uh, next questions. Are you still reading manga? Yes, and will always continue to do so. And would you consider doing a special episode on your favorite manga series? Yes, definitely with the next year I will do one. Weird question, but what are your preferred reading positions and did you ever have any physical problems because of reading so much? Just sitting down, laying the books on the table, and that's it. And the other reading position is what I call the Sphinx Formation, like this one. As for physical problems, the one that I have encountered is the one on my eyes. It's back before I got an e-reader, and when I was reading ebooks on iPad or on my phone, every time I finish reading, my I always get massive headache. It, it was awful. E-reader is a lifesaver. And uh, next question is, favorite type of video game, RPG and actions? And we arrive at the last question. I used to hate reading fantasy in Kindle and insisted on physical book, but nowadays and drawn more and more towards Kindle. What about you? Like I said earlier, I don't have a preference when it comes to reading novels now between uh, physical books and uh, Kindle, but I will always choose physical books for books with interior artworks. And that's it, I think I've answered almost all the questions that I've received. I'm sorry if I weren't able to answer your question. I will try my best uh, to answer them all next time. I'm not sure yet when I will do another Q&A like this, but I'm very thankful for this one. You guys have made it possible. And maybe I will do another one when this channel reaches 10,000 subscribers? Maybe. We'll, we'll see. I don't know when that will happen. But anyway, this has been amazing. Seriously, I'm so thankful. And I hope all of you will continue to support this channel. And let's drown in our TBR pile together. Thank you for watching. And as always, thank you so much for your support. Bye-bye.